For Armenia and Turkey, football and diplomacy go hand in hand. Just a few days before a historic match against the Turks, Euronews asked around the Armenian team what they think of closer ties. After months of negotiations, these countries are heading towards a full normalization of their historically strained relations. This could redraw the geopolitical map of the region. It could mean opening the border. This was Armenian team captain Sargis's view before entering the qualifying round for the World Cup. Politicians can learn a lot from sport, especially football. Borders don't limit us on the playing field. We play in different countries, have no enemies really. We just know the pitch we are playing on and the team we are playing with. Politicians can learn from us the meaning of friendship or neutrality. The football associations of Turkey and Armenia are winners of the FIFA Fair Play Award. The president of the Armenian Association is an influential businessman. Well, I'm a businessman, but I cannot predict for certain if the opening of the border with Turkey will benefit the Armenian economy. But generally speaking, of course, it will bring more free movement and deregulation. Looking at things that way, opening the border could be a good exercise. Turkey exports goods to Armenia worth around 177 million euros per year. Armenian exports to Turkey are at around 1.35 million euros. In other words, the Armenian market is open to Turkey, while Turkey in effect keeps its own market all but closed to Armenia. Its goods have to go through third countries, mainly Georgia. From the Armenian capital, Erevan, we drive to Vanadzor, the country's third biggest city. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, tens of thousands of Vanadzor's inhabitants left. Armenia stands to gain immediate benefit from a lifting of the de facto Turkish embargo. Turkey is a market of 70 million people, but the Armenian economy will also face pressures from open borders. Products made in Turkey are good quality and competitively priced, so as part of its preparation, Armenia is reforming vocational education and training, together with the European Training Foundation. To me, the biggest problem of our VET system yet is that it is not completely directed or targeted to the labor market needs and requirements. Early morning in Vanadzor, Victoria is chief designer in a clothing business. Her family has survived by sewing. The skill was passed from generation to generation. This way of learning is still quite common in Armenia. But Victoria and her sisters went further. They went to a technological college and got a diploma. Vanadzor has a long tradition in textiles, but with the breakup of the Soviet Union came industrial collapse. Most of those no longer working in the textile industry have emigrated from Armenia, mostly to Russia. Only 5% of the industry's former population still works in it. The other industrial pillar of Vanadzor, chemical production, has also crumbled. Only a few hundred people still work in the plants making fertilizer. There was also periodic persecution by the Turks, and Victoria's family always took this antique when it was forced to go. This sewing machine is our family treasure. It belonged to my grandmother's grandmother. I think that the opening of the Turkish-Armenian border will be good for Armenia. But we do have a kind of fear, because both my grandmother and her grandmother had to flee from Turkey. They lived in Georgia. Then our family lived in Azerbaijan. From Azerbaijan, we were also expelled. Then we came to Armenia. That's why we're somehow afraid. But I think there might be a positive side to normalized relations with Turkey. The clothes produced in Victoria's factory are mainly for German and Italian customers. Foreign investors are attracted by how little an ordinary textile worker is paid here, about 100 euros per month. But there is a problem. The clothes have to be sent through Georgia, which takes a week, so the management is fully in favor of the opening up with Turkey of the borders to bring down transport costs. Victoria is also very positive about reforming professional training. With a vocational school diploma, you can climb the career ladder. It opens up professional opportunities. 
At the Technological College, where Victoria got her diploma, teachers have taken part in familiarization exchanges in the EU. Now more stress is placed on teamwork and creativity. A German investor plans to build up textile production in Vanadzor, meaning 2,000 new jobs. The Germans early on assessed the quality of local training. The school's director is proud of its links with the economy. We usually invite the town's business circles to participate in the state exams and oral procedures for qualification in our college. This provides an opportunity for others to see the student's performance. If they like a student, they immediately hire them when the procedure is complete. Lagging behind university instruction, Armenian vocational education has received a significant boost in recent years with EU support. Heading west now towards the Turkish border, police checkpoints increase. Our destination is Megrashat, honey village in translation, right on the border. Only 500 people still live here today, the younger ones left for France and Germany. Perhaps an open border and economic development could stop more from leaving. Although some in the village are against closer dealings with the Turks, this farmer is all for opening the border. He wants to visit the land of his ancestors. I dream of going where my grandfathers lived. Also, our economy might improve. There might be more trade. Most of the smaller children we talked to said they wouldn't play with Turkish children, saying they were enemies. But the bigger ones were more open-minded. We met Liana and Hovik in patriotism class, which is for pre-military training. I'd like to get into contact with the kids on the Turkish side of the border, to be friends with them. I have dreamed of the border opening up since I was little. I've always wanted to go to the other side to talk to the people, make friends and see what they do, how they talk. Let's find out. The town's mayor takes us on a short walk to the border, still closed and heavily guarded by Russian troops on the Armenian side and by Turkish NATO soldiers on the other. With the border open, we'll be able to organize certain things between Turkish and Armenian villages, even start an inter-community day. We already have a project for that in 2010. Victoria's family sewing machine is an ever-present reminder of long persecution. A Christian Armenia and Muslim Turkey protocol would burnish Turkey's modern credentials, boost Armenia's economy and help regional security in a key transit area for oil and gas supplies to the West. 